بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد اليوم اكملت لكم دينكم ايات وريبيل و الله سبحانه وتعالى acknowledge and inform the ummah that i have perfected your deen your religion for you wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati i have completed my favor upon you wa raditu lakum al islam deen i have chosen islam as your deen this is a great favor on uh, uh, this ummah for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had completed deen and there was no need for any other system any other pattern any other religion except the way which janabi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had brought and that's why he was a seal of anbiya for all insan and jinnat so whatever we've been commanded to do and whatever we've been forbidden we need to comply so that's why in another ayat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains what tamat kalimatu rabbika sidq the word of allah has been fulfilled in truth and in justice so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging us encouraging us to accept islam to to obey deen to make this our constitution Ibn Jarir has recorded al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum and this ayah was revealed during the day of Arafah and the 9th of Dhul Hijjah Umar radiyallahu anhu cried Nabi alayhi salam asked him oh Umar what makes you cry he said what makes me tear is that our deen is being perfected for us now that it is complete it is perfect nothing that reaches its climax but what comes after that is deterioration so nabi alayhi salam acknowledged the words of umar radiyallahu anhu and said sadaqta you have spoken the truth umar in al islam bada ghariban wa sayud ghariban kama bada islam was strange in the beginning people were unfamiliar and it will return to this strangeness again fatuba lil ghuraba glad tidings for those strangers so we are witnessing this era where if a person goes to the masjid is regarded as abnormal when he dresses sunnah he is regarded as abnormal when he is not on social media in all these technology platforms he is considered abnormal fatuba lil ghuraba glad tidings to these people let the world call you abnormal allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the farishtas in the heavens you are beloved to allah you are beloved to the rasul of allah your walking is mubarak your talking is mubarak so this is 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 the climax of any gifts that's why the jewish person told umar radiyallahu an that there is a verse in the quran which you will read if it was revealed to us we would have made it a day of eid and celebration what verse al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum umar replied by allah i know when where this verse was revealed to the nabi of allah it was in the evening on the day of arafa on yawmul jumu'ah the day of the jumu'ah so we are fortunate to have this deen and unfortunate not to appreciate it and practice on it and we are witnessing an era of fitan we are witnessing an era of deterioration we are witnessing an era of paganism yet we believe the customs of patil and falsehood to be true and correct and we are searching we are avarice we are desirous of success in their systems our example is like a person who lost his watch and he was searching for it so he passed a by came and offered to help him so he asked him what have you lost he said my watch it fell it uh, i got I, i tripped and, and and i cannot find it so the passer by joined in the search 
quarter hour, half an hour, one hour searching, searching. Person also got frustrated. Where exactly, exactly did you lose it? Where is the exact spot that you lost it? So he replied about half a block up, uh, up the street. Half a block up the street. So he asked him, then why are you looking for your watch here when you lost it? Half a block up the street. So the man replied, because there's a lot of light in here and it will be more visible. I can see it more clearly. There's higher visibility. So we are seeing uh, their light. We are blind of the real darkness around us. There's no treasure where we're looking for it. The real treasure is what Allah's Rasul brought, Saba cherished, and now the Ummah has lost it. And we're not even looking for that item, we're looking for the other items which are not even part of our inheritance. So we are the people of Iman, we're supposed to be teaching the world, we're supposed to be trendsetters, we have all the solutions for humanity in both the worlds, yet we are blind. Like a woman saw an electrician walking up her driveway, she rushed to the door and she said, why have you come today? Scram, you were supposed to repair the doorbell yesterday. So the electrician replied, yes I know, yes I know, but I rang the bell three times and there was no answer. He came to repair the bell, the doorbell that was inoperative and he's saying I rang the bell three times, there was no answer, so I thought, so you must be out, you must be away. So such a deen, وَكَانَ الْعَرَبِ يَعْبُدُونَ الْأَسْنَامِ That when Nabi والسلام, came, the era and the epicenter of jihalat and ignorance, yet this deen and the nur and the anwarat of nubuwat was so bright, that it removed all these darknesses. Our only solution lies in following this light here, not the light on our laptops and cell phones, which is filled and brimming with darkness and zulmat. Something that they built with their own hands, idol worship was rife at that time. Today we have made ourselves idols by promoting ourselves on these platforms. Then the Arabs at that time were very superstitious. Where the person wanted to marry, travel, business, etc. They would release a bird and if it went onto the right, they would consider it good luck and, and, and uh, do it and uh, think it to be beneficial. Where this, it went to the left side they abandoned that action and thought so there is bad luck. So they had a lot of superstitions. Likewise, they were drowning in impurities and, and, and different types of gunas and crimes. They used to drink blood, they used to eat carrion, etc. So uh, Sun and Ma'asyat was at its climax to such an extent يَطُوفُونَ بِالْكَعْبَةِ عُرَاتًا نِسَاءً وَرِجَالًا Whether it was the men or the women, they used to make the waf of the Baytullah unclothed. And they thought so that we wore clothing normally, that was a cloth that we committed sin. So we need to come in front of the Baytullah pure. So na'udhu billah. These examples are given for us to contemplate. When we ponder and when we look deep, we will, we will, we will say that how uh, crazy, how insane, how is it possible for people to reach that level? But what is happening in a global scale with regards to laws and, 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 and governments and people endorsing batil, endorsing haram, endorsing falsehood has become a norm and a fashion and we are ready to follow the trend which is the trend against Deen. So in that time as well 
zina, adultery was quite common. They had four types of nikahs in riwayat of Aisha radiallahu anha in Bukhari radiallahu anha. Um, the different types of nikahs and how women were oppressed. Likewise, they used to bury the daughters alive. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقِ وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَهَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى So all these customs uh, and, and tribal fanaticism were over a small issue. They would fight for many years. Women were deprived of any rights. They were deprived of any social standing, any inheritance, any honor. Islam came in this era of darkness and when you switch on the light, darkness dissipates and disappears. So we have different customs over time. One of them is Christmas. So Shaitan wants people to do wrong. He wants them to do idol worship. And the climax of idol worship is Shirk ascribing partners to Allah. Amongst the idols, whether they worship the sun, whether they worship the sun gods, they created idols of the sun gods, from the Babylonians to the Assyrians, uh, Zoroastrians, the, the center of worship was the sun. So that's why we are forbidden. It is not permissible to read Salah when it is sunrise, sunset, and it is zenith. So we find historians have mentioned that Namrud was the originator of sun worship, the founder of Babylon. And uh, it started where he started encouraging and uh, taking people away. And that's what Shaitan wants. He will use human beings to instigate and, and, and propagate evil and make people rebel against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Namrud himself was, was a, a climax and an and epitome of, of, of sin and ma'asiyat. So some historians have mentioned that when uh, he had passed away and the evergreen tree sprang up, then that tree stump which symbolized the springing forth of a new life, and it was the new life of the dead Namrud, then on the anniversary of his birth, this green tree, people would leave gifts upon it. That was the 25th of December, which was the birthday of Namrud. And that's where one historian has mentioned the origin of the Christmas tree as well. So um, he was the, the false messiah, the son of Baal, the sun god. So the, the, the Babylonian system and the worship of the mother and the child that spread and it, it infiltrated Egypt, Asia, uh, the pagan Rome, Greece and, and, and the entire world uh, were engrossed and involved in this pagan worship. So in realistic terms, and all historians are unanimous, that this 25th of December evolved from pagan traditions, which we just discussed now. And uh, it was through the winter, winter solstice. So it's, 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 it's bringing about that inner pagan nature and it's devil worship, satanic worship. So early as the fourth century, uh, this pagan uh, routine, this, this pagan custom was, was common and it had nothing to do with Isa alayhi salatu was salam. So the, the Romans, there was a feast called Saturnalia which celebrated the solstice. So the solstice is the day that the sun, sun starts coming back, the, stay, the day starts getting longer and uh, we see that uh, they were celebrating this which is part of, of the Roman culture and as Christianity spread and became the official religion, then this date was fixed. So this was an important day in Rome for giving gifts, candle lighting, uh, decoration, etc. 
So this Christmas, this Christmas has got nothing to do with Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, nor the Christmas tree. So the, the evergreen tree, the, the, the signal of the return of life and the light. Again, the light here is synonymous with the sun worship, devil worship, satanic worship, shaitan worship. And uh, people used to even hang apples on these trees. So uh, little red balls on green trees. So a green tree fertility and uh, fertility as well. So when these two uh, are united, it's the idea of giving life and reincarnation. Even if you look at the mistletoe, it uh, was started by the Dreads and they believed that it had a healing power. It was from the sacred oak tree. So even if you had to meet somebody and uh, at that time it was jungles and forests and you gave them a mistletoe, then uh, that was a symbol of peace. But actually, in realistic terms, it was a symbol of paganism. And at one stage, it was so uh, high in paganism that the church actually banned the use of it. So there was a, a point where the church put on a war on Christmas. And this is uh, going back in the mid 17th century with the Puritans where these were all pagan ideas and the Puritans banned Christmas for 20 years in America, which afterwards it became uh, famous, it became popular. So you've got the middle of winter and even before Isa salams come in, the this darkest days of winter were rejoiced and that's again connected to sunlight and the Saturnalia and the, the honor of Saturn, the god of agriculture. So uh, in those times food and drink were plentiful uh, they used to celebrate and uh, many customs came from there. So if you look at it from the Romans where they had a festival from the winter solstice, the rebirth of the sun, going up to the Greek mythology where Titan was a personification of the sun. So again, uh, ancient Greeks associated the sun with Apollo, the god of enlightenment. So, and, 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 and Apollo generally uh, was depicted with a, a fiery chariot. So, so Santa Claus, and we'll come to the significance of the color red, given um, the blood, Nauzubillah, of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So there's a lot of red in Christmas. So he sacrificed his blood against shirk and ascribing partners with Allah. So that was the Greek mythology. If you go to the Aztecs as well, where they had the sun god and uh, they considered the, the heavens and uh, that's where the sun originated from, from the sky. And they were into cosmology and uh, each of their sun gods had their own cosmic areas and arenas. Even if you look up to the Chinese, then in their mythology as well, they had uh, Tai Yang who was the grandfather sun, the star lord, the lord of the solar palace, lord of the sun. So again, it, 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 it infiltrated every society. Go back to the Celtics. And uh, the sun god, which was in, in, in the goddess, uh, and the solar goddess, the sun god, um, go to, to Egyptian history, where they had the sun god as well. Even the Hindus uh, revered the, the, the sun god. So the Adityas, uh, lost his identity and, and, and metamorphed into a deity 
Surya, the sun. So, so, so this this day here is 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 completely um, fabricated. There is no connection whatsoever with regards to Isa alayhi salam. Unfortunately, the people of Iman wish uh, give glad tidings, uh, Merry Christmas, uh, take the kids to the Santa Claus, to the stores, to sit on his lap. Now, Billah, your young daughter sitting on the lap of a strange man and he is a pedophile, you never know what goes in their minds, so corrupt minds of people, a kafir, etc. So this is all deception and the people of Iman need to be vigilant. The Amal for today is, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam went with Sahaba to a graveyard. Assalamu alaykum dar qawmim mu'minin. Then Nabi alayhi salam said, وَدِدْتُ أَنْ قَدْ رَأَيْنَا إِخْوَانَنَا I wish I could see my brothers. Sahaba over there said, أَوَلَسْنَا إِخْوَانَكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Are we not your brothers? He said, أَنْتُمْ أَصْحَابِي You are my companions. وَإِخْوَانُنَا الَّذِينَ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بَعْدُ My brothers are those who have not come yet. Sahaba inquired, كَيْفَ تَعْرِفْ مَنْ لَمْ يَأْتِي بَعْدُ مِنْ أُمَّتِكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ How will you recognize them? So if you have a white-headed horse with white marks on his legs amongst black horses, will you see this horse? Yes. فَإِنَّهُمْ يَأْتُونَ غُرًّا مُحَجَّلِينَ مِنَ الْهُضُوءِ They will come with their faces and their limbs bright due to making hudu. وَنَفَرَطُهُمْ عَلَى الْحَوْضِ So when making hudu, don't rush. Try to make hudu properly how it has been prescribed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ